Hello, welcome back to Simply Rad. Today we will talk about the appearance of pyogenic brain abscess. Let's start with these two rim enhancing masses on the right occipital lobe. When we look at the same lesion on the T2 image, we see that the margin has a hypo-intense rim. And on SWI, we see two layers of this concentric rim. So why would abscesses look like this on MRI? If we take a closer look at the rim, we will see that it has an outer dark line and an inner bright line. This is called the dual rim sign. What is seen in the microscope explains the imaging appearance of the dual rim sign. Think of the brain abscess as a war between the humans and the orcs, with the humans on the winning side. So the job of the body is to contain the infection. If this is the battlefield, imagine that the body was able to create a barrier to contain the enemy. So at the inner part of the abscess, there are dead bacteria and fallen soldiers. This barricade zone, stained here in blue-green, is called the granulation tissue. Granulation tissue is composed of fibroblasts, which lay down collagen. And aside from this, there are also macrophages and other inflammatory cells. These macrophages produce free radicals, and these free radicals are paramagnetic. The paramagnetic properties of the free radicals explains why we see a hypo-intense rim on the SWI and T2 images. This outer hypo-intense rim on the SWI image corresponds to the enhancing part of the granulation tissue. So why is this dual rim sign useful? If you look at this rim-enhancing lesion, you might include an abscess as part of your differential diagnosis. So aside from the DWI and the appearance of the margin on the contrast study, we also look for other findings to support our differential diagnosis of abscess. So let us look at the SW. On SWI, the hypo-intense rim is very irregular as compared to the smooth and complete hypo-intense rim of an abscess. This case on the left side of the screen is a necrotic glioblastoma. So why is the appearance very different? The difference lies on what causes the hypo-intense signal. For the abscess, the hypo-intense rim is due to the paramagnetic free radicals from the macrophages, while in glioblastoma, the hypo-intense rim is due to the blood products. That is why it has a very irregular appearance. So why is it that there is no dual rim sign in glioblastoma? Let us recall that in the abscess, the inner hyperintense rim is made by the granulation tissue, which is a mix of collagen, fibroblast, macrophages, and other inflammatory tissue. You do not expect to see this kind of tissue in glioblastoma. So we do not expect to see the dual rim sign in GBM. Let us look at another difference between the two. If we draw a line along the enhancing portion of the lesion, and overlay it on the SWI image, what do you notice? On the abscess, the enhancing rim overlaps with the hypo-intense rim, while in GBM, there are portions of the enhancing rim that does not overlap with the hypo-intense rim. So that is another clue to differentiate GBM from abscess. In summary, a pyogenic brain abscess has a characteristic dual rim sign on SWI because of the granulation tissue. This granulation tissue contains collagen and other cells among which are macrophages, which creates the byproducts called free radicals, which create the smooth, hypo-intense outer rim. So recognizing this dual rim sign is helpful to differentiate a pyogenic abscess from a necrotic glioblastoma. 
Thank you for your time and see you on the next video.